I uh, saw you guys had a garage sale sign out front. I was wondering if you guys had any uh, video games, any old Nintendo or Sega games. Oh yeah, and by the way, there was this vase in the other room. I accidentally knocked it over. A whole bunch of dust came out. I was wondering if you guys had maybe like a dust buster or you know something I could just kind of take care of that with. <sighs> okay, time out. Let's see. No. Yeah, that's the stuff. Welcome back to the game collection. I am Super Derek, and this is the Sword of Mana. Sword of Mana is a reimagining of Final Fantasy Adventure for the Game Boy Advance released in 2003. I say reimagining and not remake because while a lot of things were carried over from the original, the final product bears little resemblance to the little Game Boy game that could. At the beginning of Sword of Mana, you're given a choice between one of two characters, a boy or a girl. The hero in this case is this game's version of Sumo, whereas the heroine is Fuji a previously unplayable character in Final Fantasy Adventure. In either case, the game starts off with some background that the Dark Lord has been pursuing the Mana Clan and wiping out people because they prosper while other nations are afflicted with famine and are ravaged by war. The Dark Lord has been purging the land of the Mana Clan, and their would-be protectors have been deemed heretics. It's here that our story begins, as two children attempt to evade their pursuers. Sumo is captured while the girl escapes, which sets the stage. We play as either Sumo, the gladiator, or Fuji, the girl who got away. Shortly after Sumo's daring escape, the two meet up again and discover that they've got a common enemy and decide to join forces to defeat the Dark Lord by obtaining and wielding the legendary Sword of Mana. If any of this sounds familiar, it should. Sword of Mana doesn't stray too far from the path laid by Final Fantasy Adventure. At times, the game expands on certain ideas or changes the nature of certain encounters, changes some motivations, and in some case, the very nature of the people that you come to meet. But all in all, the basic events within the game remain more or less the same. And all of this sounds pretty good on paper, which makes it kind of difficult to explain what about it made it so... disappointing. And that in turn brings up the question of what makes for a good remake. At risk of sounding too preachy or philosophical, I'll try to keep this brief, but I think that a remake ought to do one of two things. It should either, one, faithfully recreate the original experience with higher fidelity graphics and music and maybe some gameplay improvements, and maybe even expand upon the original story in a believable way that doesn't really affect the original plot too badly. Or, in the case of a reimagining, it should stick loosely to the basics of the original, but go all out with audio, visual, and gameplay overhauls, without getting mired with the details of the original, or, in this case, being held back by them. And that's where Sword of Mana went wrong. Final Fantasy Adventure was a bit of a simple game, 
Very generic overall, save for a token Moogle, Chocobo, or Rabbite here and there. For what it was at the time, it was a passable way to spend some quality time with the original Game Boy, but nobody ever fooled themselves into thinking that the plot was one of its strong points. And that's what makes Final Fantasy Adventure so primed for a reimagining. However, most of what was kept from Adventure were things that we could have most done without. The structure of the game was very primitive, and despite valiant efforts to add a fresh coat of paint and a bag of new tricks, the pacing still felt primitive and tied down by its older cousin. Getting back to the feature I mentioned earlier about being able to choose between characters at the beginning of the game, I was pretty excited about this at first. I immediately thought back to Hexus Force and how I could play through two sides of the same coin. But while Hexus Force might be an example of the correct way to tell two concurrent stories in two different playthroughs, Sword of Mana is an example of how not to do things. The two characters play exactly the same, and in some cases, they even look the same. The only difference is that the hero gets a sword to start, and the heroine gets a staff which grants homing magic abilities. That sorted me, but where I thought I would see two paths through the same story, Changing the protagonist only changes which character takes the one predetermined path through that story, with only a single exception, which is terribly short-lived. Even the dialogue spoken by the protagonist is the same between the two stories. Lacking any form of Game Plus mode, I feel like the second playthrough was pretty much a complete waste of time. I guess what I'm getting at is that if you're playing Sword of Mana for the plot, you may be disappointed. However, if you're interested in playing Secret of Mana on your Game Boy Advance, well, with the right expectations, you may be in for a treat. Sure, I just came down on the game pretty hard there for a few moments, but that doesn't mean that I hated the game. In fact, I rather enjoyed my overall experience with it. Sure, the plot wasn't all that amazing, and it seems rather superficial, but this game draws its strengths from a different mana game. And if you've been looking at your screen during this review, and I hope you have, you'll probably notice that this game is absolutely gorgeous and bears a striking resemblance to The Secret of Mana. The resemblance isn't just skin deep either. Final Fantasy Adventure was a pretty admirable clone of Link's Awakening, to the same degree that Sword of Mana is a clone of Secret of Mana. Well, almost. There are some pretty big changes made to the gameplay of Sword of Mana that I think holds it back from being truly comparable to Secret of Mana. The first is the obvious lack of multiplayer. Apparently this game had development plans to include multiplayer, but that never ended up panning out. There's still some connectivity tacked onto the game, but local multiplayer it is not. In addition, the spell system is pretty weak. Granted, the magic within Secret of Mana was all kinds of ridiculousness, but the game was at least balanced for it. In Sword of Mana, rather than targeting the enemies from the menu, you can cast magic from equipped spirits and the nature of the attack is determined by the weapon that you have equipped. Again, that sounds pretty cool on paper, but in practice it means a lot of menu navigation to get to the desired spirit with the desired magic attack. I've already talked about how good this game looks. I've compared it to Secret of Mana, but I kind of think that it actually looks closer to Seiken Densetsu 3. It's very, very pretty and has lots of rooms that were entirely hand-drawn rather than tile-based, which is a really nice touch and exudes quality. The Sword of Mana contains a few remakes of songs from the original Game Boy title, as well as some particularly awesome new tracks. The desert theme is one of my favorites. But even here, the game is a bit of a mixed bag. While playing the game, upgrading my weapons and equipment, as I often did, I was subjected to some pretty terrible and repetitive music that can get on the nerves pretty quickly. It's unfortunate that the worst track in the entire game is so unavoidable and prominently displayed for all to hear. And really, I guess that's just the most apt description of the game that I can come up with. It is a mixed bag. It gets wrong a lot of things that Secret of Mana got right, while also keeping wrong the things that Final Fantasy Adventure got wrong. But there is a lot of good in the game too, and there's a lot of fun to be had. And for a $10, 25-hour action RPG inspired by the Secret of Mana, well, 
That sort of puts my complaints into perspective. If you're a fan of the Mana series, then the Sword of Mana is not a bad way to spend some quality time with your Game Boy Advance. It's not going to live up to the hype set by The Secret of Mana, but could anybody really expect it to? It's not even really a replacement for Final Fantasy Adventure, which is still a must-play game for any fan of the Game Boy Zelda games. These two games are the missing links that bridge that gap between The Legend of Zelda and the Mana series, and that fact in and of itself has earned these games a spot in the game collection. Hey guys, before I go, I thought I'd mention that this was the first game that I live-streamed my gameplay capture sessions, and I think that it went pretty well. Check out this link if you'd like to see some of my previous streams. Moving forward, I'll be streaming all of my capture sessions while hanging out with viewers, and if you want to be informed of when I go live, follow me on Twitter. So far, I've had a blast hanging out with you guys, and I'd really like it if you'd join us.